the inspiration for this gathering is a story that appeared in the February issue of Fast Company that was titled, Is the Tipping Point Toast? How does the airline network work? Well, if, you, if you're trying to get from a, a small airport in upstate New York, where I was going to graduate school in, in Ithaca, to the small town that I grew up in in Australia, uh, the first thing you do is get to the nearest big airport, to the nearest hub. You know, unlike Chicago O'Hare, which can you know, handle millions of, of, uh, of passengers a, a day, uh, and thousands of flights a day, uh, people don't scale. Right? There's only so many hours in a day, there's only so many people you can talk to, there's only so many friends. So you, you, you can't have. know a million people, You basically. can't know a million right. people. I mean, you, you know, Tila Tequila has a million friends on MySpace. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she doesn't and talk to them talk sort of a great length every day. that they're not really her friends. We actually redid Milgram's experiment uh, a right. few years ago. With, yeah, with email. On, with using email instead of physical packets. And, and we found that, that Milgram's uh, results were, our results were very consistent with Milgram's, except for the one about the, the hubs. To make sure I'm understanding you correctly, so when you ran these simulations, you know, you, you've got one group where there's like, influentials and you're targeting ideas right, right. them to see how they see if it can turn into a, a, a contagion of mm -hmm. idea virus. You've got another one where you're just doing it randomly. So you're hitting some average Joes and you're hitting some influentials. Yeah. In both cases, you, you do actually get cascades that cover the entire site. You do get Sometimes, real, yeah. real idea yeah. viruses. What we found, roughly speaking, is that, that what the, the, the thing that you need in a network to, to uh, trigger a large cascade is not highly influential people, but easily influenced people. Right, everyone, else, are, everyone else has to be influenceable. And, and, and actually right. not just easily influenced people, but easily influenced people influencing other easily, easily influenced influenceable people. people. Right, yeah, right? yeah. And so those are not the easily people who are, dominoes. Those are not yeah. the people who are going to show up in your survey. Move away from this uh, idea of influence and, and, and think more about influenceability. If you've had sort of six weeks of soaking rain, you know, you don't have to worry about a forest fire, right? Uh, uh, but just because the conditions have been sort of marginal for a while doesn't mean that you're going to, to, to have a fire, and it, it mean, doesn't mean that you know how big it's going to be if you get one. Um, but when it's really dry, you can throw a match anywhere. No one would think that, the, that, the, that, the, that you could attribute the size of the really large forest fires to something about the match that started them. Yeah, right? or something exactly. about the tree that was the first one to burn. Right. Uh, you can do a little bit better than, than, than just sort of look at generic uh, right. you know, uh, susceptibility. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the, you know, there is a real structure in this network that is responsible for triggering these cascades. And, and what you would like to do is to be able to have better ways of locating uh, that, that structure. I can tell that you, sir, have never spent any time with any of these so-called hipsters and influencers. You, you, you just, you don't know what you're talking about. I do know that these kids are down there, they are influencing and rippling out culture. If you, if you, whatever device you have, whatever, you know, way you have of identifying these people, you go and do that 50 times in a row and it always works, then I think you have a causal story. Yeah. What if you do it 50 times and it works once out of those 50 times and the other 49 times you waste your client's I money? I don't know. It's a hypothetical that we will no, never... it's not a hypothetical you know. at all. It's actually, it, it, it's actually I think, it's, it's, it, what it reflects is that people uh, uh, leave their failures on the cutting room floor and they just extol the one success that they have. The problem with the interventional theory is it's incredibly vague. All it really says is two things. Is that some people a rare few are more influential than others, and that through some mysterious process, they are able to transmit that influence to other people. That's it. Are we to take away from that then Nike's $20 million to Tiger Woods is misspent? Tiger Woods is, is Chicago O'Hare, right? right? But he's also expensive, right? So it's a different, you know, the, the, uh, you know it, it, that's, a, that's really the, the mass media, right? I mean, we sort of think of, I mean, obviously Tiger Woods is an individual person, but his outsized influence is not him talking to his friends. The influence that you get from watching Oprah Winfrey on television is different from talking to your best friend about, about some mm -hmm. product, which is different from reading about it on a blog. You know, all of these things are different. And I think that, you know, that if we actually sort of were just, I mean, just to just clarify what it is that we're actually saying when we say these things, uh, it would, you know, we would actually start to make some progress.